Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. It is a podcast, therefore it is undated. I'm Erin Trafford. I'm the host here at The Fourth Draft. Welcome in. This is officially episode 10 of season one. Pretty wild. Thank you for making this show part of your podcast listening routine. And this is the show where we talk about media. We talk about new media. We talk about podcasting. We talk about podcast networks. We talk about using media in your marketing strategy. All those things that I have learned over the last 25 years of my career, doing the audios and the TVs and the digitals. We talk about it all here. So we're going to get a little nerdy today. And I want to answer a question that I get all the time. And I'm probably going to frustrate you because I'm going to answer the question with a whole bunch of other questions. I'm going to turn it back on you. But the question we're going to answer today is, hey, Aaron, how do I get more downloads on my podcast? Let's dig in to the download. What even is it? What is it? Because... I hurt my brain the other day trying to define it. There are problems with defining a download. And when there's problems with defining a download, let me tell you, there's problems then with equating your show's value to a download. It's really, really hard to evaluate something using a metric that you can't fully understand. So yeah, we're gonna get nerdy on this today. We're gonna talk a little bit about the inherent challenges with using just the download as the measure of your success. We can equate that to some of the challenges we're seeing in traditional broadcast where they don't even have a metric like a download. In fact, when you're measuring traditional radio and television, the metrics get even more pithy than downloads. Um, And we're also, I'm going to give you a new calculation for a better way to consider the health of your show. So I'm not going to just leave you hanging with like, you know, your brain exploding like mine did. <laughs> I'm definitely going to give you some food for thought. All right, so let's dig in. I, I and, and this was inspired by a friend, by a colleague. I was actually on her podcast and it, uh, Renee Warren. And I'll post the link to the podcast episode of her show that I was on in the show notes here. Um, But it all started over on threads when she posed this question. Hey, how do I get more downloads on my podcast? Because, and she had a whole bunch of reasons for why she wanted more downloads. And it was mainly because she wanted to attract these really, uh, I'm going to call them like celebutant guests to her show. And that's fine and good. If that's what you want to do, whatever floats your boat, sister. Like I'm there for you. But I actually dug in and fundamentally questioned why it was the download that she wanted. So here was kind of my response to her. And I've summarized this and let me know if this resonates with you at all. Because from my vantage point, if I'm trying to be completely objective, when somebody comes to me and says, how can I get more downloads on my podcast? It's what I want to say is like a, it's an X, Y problem. You're already assuming the answer is the download. Let's peel it back a little and reframe this because asking that question is essentially the same as asking, how do I get more followers on my Instagram? Or how do I get more people to see my display ad? Or how do I drive more traffic, not clicks, more traffic to my website or my blog, right? And full disclosure, as I'm recording this episode of The Fourth Draft, I'm also running a live stream on Instagram right now. So there are folks who are watching on Instagram being like, oh yeah, that question of how do I get more followers on Instagram is kind of not the right question to be asking, right? So I'm not slagging the question as a whole. It's it's a decent place to start the conversation, but it cannot be the be all and the end all because at the end of the day, It's lacking, completely lacking in context and intention. And all of the answers can vary, right? So how are you going to get more followers, more downloads, more website visits, more views, whatever, insert desired metric there? I mean, there's tons of ways you can do that, right? You can join an engagement pod. I don't recommend 
I don't recommend you do that, but you could do that. Uh, you could buy traffic through bots and paid clicks. And hey, guess what? If you're a podcaster and you don't know that some of these podcasts that shoot up to the top of the charts are buying downloads, I just probably busted a myth for you, but there are lots of shows out there <laughs> that are buying their way up the charts and don't actually have good content. We'll come back to this. You can use earned media and PR to grow your brand presence to inform that metric. You could tap your existing network. You could use email newsletters. You can follow the rule on social media, which I call like 10, 30, 10, which is where you follow 10 new people. You engage with 30 people. You spend 10 minutes answering questions. All of these things are ways to grow your show and or your base metric. You can do so many things to increase your downloads. But what I want to question today is what is at the crux of that question and why is it actually problematic? The download is a result. The download is not the desire. The download is a result. The download is not the desire. So let's go back one step even further than that is how do you get a result? It's with a clear and focused strategy. And strategy needs to have more measurement than just a download. So, and, and let's, let's talk about the other problematic thing, which is I brought this up in the intro, is the definition of a download itself is actually hugely problematic. If you're on Apple Podcasts, if you're on Spotify, if you're on, I was going to say Google Podcasts, but it's going the way of the dodo. But like all of these platforms have different ways of not only defining a download, but measuring them. So when you're looking in the back end of your Apple podcasts, you are seeing a different measurement of success than when you're looking in the back end of your Spotify account. And then when you're looking at your platform, your host, we host Story Studio Network on the enterprise level Spreaker, which is associated with iHeart, but you may be on Libsyn. A lot of folks use BuzzFeed. Uh, there's a lot of good hosts out there. Like I'm not going to slag any of them. I've been on I don't know, I've probably used five or six in the last couple of years. They're all great. Uh, and they all have some sort of aggregator in the back end that pulls all your data together so you can look at a dashboard all in the back end. But I hate to break it to you is that that aggregator is aggregating data that is all coming from different sources that are all measuring different things. So I'll stop for a second and let you catch a breath. <laughs> All of this to say is that the download is an inherently flawed metric. It is inherently flawed. So, but it's the best we've got. Okay. So like, I'm not flagging it. It's the best we've got, but we've got to understand that it has its limitations when it comes to measuring success. So on Apple podcasts, for example, just for example, Apple podcasts, um, the term play. So when someone hits play on Apple podcasts, that big triangle button that is for Apple synonymous with download. Okay. So when a, a listener or your audience member initiates a playback by hitting that button, it is counted as a play or a download. What is important to know here, because Apple podcasts, it goes back and forth, depends on your audience. We have some shows in our network where Apple is far and away the um, platform of choice for that audience. Others, it's Spotify. Like on this show, I actually have more people listening to Fourth Draft on Spotify than I do on Apple. So that's something that you want to be mindful of. But the reality is for Apple Podcasts is that they don't require that listener who is hitting the play button to stay listening for any duration of the show. So, you know, like when you're, I don't know, you're like sticking your phone in your back pocket and like you accidentally hit play on something. Like I've done it all a bunch of times where like I have like butt played something by accident that would count as a download. And I don't know about you, but if somebody like butt plays my show, I'm like, I don't want that metric. They didn't actually intend to listen. They didn't stick around and listen. They, they accidentally hit the play button. That counts. That counts on Apple Podcasts, okay? But on Spotify, for example, so the other biggie, um, is that they have two ways of measuring this. They have the play, which like Apple is registered every single time that play button is initiated or pressed, which 
indicates the beginning of a playback, as in the RSS feed is being played back. But a download, conversely, is registered only when a listener has stuck around and listened for at least 60 seconds. So that listener needs to have been in listening to that show or that audio needs to have been playing on their device for at least a minute in order for it to register on Spotify as a download. So instantly you can see how if you are comparing Spotify download numbers to Apple Podcast download numbers for your show, there's going to be an aberration because Apple Podcasts actually doesn't have the equivalent of a download metric. They don't care how long someone spends listening to your show. So I would say if you are going to use downloads as a, how do I get more downloads? I wouldn't be looking at Apple podcast data. I would filter the back end of your host. So it's only showing you Spotify or I would, um, you know, I, I would be looking only at the Spotify data to be perfectly honest. Um, and, and that's just, you know, because Spotify is the one that has the download. <clears throat> okay, so, so like at the end of the day, really what's happening, <laughs> really what is happening is there is a huge problem with just the term download in and of itself, okay? So if you are asking yourself, how do I get more downloads? I would, at this point in time, as we're recording this, I would be focusing more on your Spotify numbers than on your Apple podcast numbers. Okay, so there's that. The next thing that I wanna leave you with here today is this better measurement. And again, this is gonna require you to do a bit of aggregating and maybe one day, maybe one day, our host platforms will be able to do this for us. But as it is right now, we got to do a little bit of leaping and a little bit of math and a little bit of, um, I don't know, like just self, self investigation on your show. Like you got to dig in and kind of look at apples to apples. So Spotify, because it is looking at that, how long someone is listening you can very easily get something that we call TSL from your Spotify numbers, which is time spent listening. So you may want to just like mark this part of the podcast and come back to it and listen to it after or take notes or whatever when you're at your desk. But I'm going to give you something to consider is that when you say, when you say, I want more downloads, what you are actually asking for what you're actually, actually asking for is I want more attention. You're actually asking for more attention on your show or on your brand or on your message. And so if that's the case, then we should be actually asking, how do we get more attention? Not how do we get more downloads? And if we're looking for more attention, how do we measure attention? Well, we can measure attention very simply using time spent listening. So here is the metric that, and if you have a podcast, you can do this right now. You can literally log in and do this right now. So you want to go and you want to look at how many downloads you've had over the course of, I don't know, the last season of your show. Let's say I wouldn't do it necessarily like episode to episode, let the data accrue for a little bit because then your numbers are just going to be easier to crunch. So let's say you had a thousand downloads on your show over however long, okay, just for easy math. And let's say in Spotify, you can see that the average time spent listening to your show, any given episode, is approximately 75%, okay? Now, the other thing that you're going to need to keep in mind is how long is my episode? And I, a lot of folks, their shows are just too damn long. They're too long. Keep your show nice and tight. It'll increase your time spent listening, It'll increase how long someone listens. You actually would rather have someone listen to two full episodes of your show than half of one episode of your show, correct? Right? You want 100% time spent listening. It does great things for the algorithm. It does great things for charting. It does great things for your media kit when you can say, hey, my listeners listen to 75% or more of every single episode I do. If your time spent listening is less than 60%, 
you have work to do on your content. You're not keeping your listener in your sphere long enough, okay? So assume that you're around 75 or 80% and your episodes are about 30 minutes long. You can back out exactly how many minutes your entire audience has spent with your brand and your show. And all of a sudden, someone out there, a brand, a media organization, whoever you're pitching, an advertiser, a partner, they can understand what a minute means, but they can't understand a download because a download is very hard to define. So all of a sudden you've created a metric that is understandable. Okay, so here's how you do it. You take time spent listening on average is a percentage. You take the length of your average show. So let's say it's 30 minutes and let's say um, let's say you have about a 75% time spent listening. That means that on average, someone you know is listening to 22 of every 30 minutes you put out. Okay, so you got 22 minutes on average. And a thousand people have listened to your show. Okay. So 22 times 1,000 is 22,000. All of a sudden, you've now determined that your show has been listened to for 22,000 minutes. And that is attention. That That is based on downloads. You need the download to figure that number out. But wow, what a more powerful metric, right? The cost of a tension, not a download. (laughs) This was an experiment doing half of an Instagram live. I don't know. I'm always trying new marketing things. I'm always trying new things. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I know this was a little bit nerdy. Um, but it's super important because I have so many folks come to me and say, like, I'm not getting enough downloads. And I'm like, but what is your time spent listening? Listen, we have shows on Story Studio Network with time spent listening of 120%. That means, that means folks are going and re-listening or they're listening multiple, multiple times. That is massively valuable so your homework is look at spotify look at apple compare them and figure out if there's an aberration there because there probably is a little bit there is for every show i've ever looked at and then calculate the cost of the attention on your show way better metric what is a download Hmm. All right, we got two shows left to close out this season of the fourth draft. And I think in the next one, what I want to talk about is this question that kicked off my entire year in 2023, which is, hey, Aaron, why do podcast networks not work? Find me on LinkedIn. Email me hello at storystudionetwork.com. I'm Aaron Trafford. Thanks so much. You're listening to the fourth draft. 